Hi. This video is about a Ruby plugin called Concrete Stair Tools. And normally it's available from the plugins menu, Concrete Stair Tools, or if you haven't availed yourself of the toolbar, you go to View, Toolbars, Concrete Stair Tool, and there you'll find four plugins for this particular tool. I have also advertised that this particular tool will be available with a baluster tool, so one more time we'll go to Toolbars and we'll highlight the uh, baluster menu and now you have available to you the four tools for the stair and the balusters which are very helpful for this particular presentation. Okay let's go right away and do a U-shaped stair because that's the kind of stair you would need for an exiting facility if you were doing a multi-story building uh, but it also could be a feature stair uh, in a downtown uh, high-rise as the main feature stair as you're walking in the main entrance depending on the code requirements so let's just look at uh, the available things that we can do here we can obviously identify the width the floor to floor height and let's just change the floor height right now to uh, the default, which was 9 feet, let's say we're going to use 10 feet. And we're going to have a, uh, a stair that's starting at a ground level and is going up one floor. So now immediately it tells me that the rise run relationship is uh, 7.5 inches. Let's eliminate right now anything having to do with picking railing options and look what this thing looks like. And here we are. I can just insert it anywhere. There we are. And let me just pull back a second and let's let's do this stair again since it's a component. But this time we want to decide on uh, what we're going to do if we're going to use this again. Now you don't want to use the same stair again. You want to really use, which doesn't make a lot of sense, when you first think about it, but we're going to go down one floor from the existing upper floor. So let's go down one floor. Nothing has changed. And let's insert that stair again. Same rise and run. We'll say OK. And let's just insert it, make sure. And I'll just superimpose it there. And here we can see that we now have happening for us an exit stair that's going over two floors at this particular moment in time. All right, let's continue with our exit stair and look at some other things that we can do with that. So we'll go back to our U-shaped stair and um, we have a floor to floor height of 10 feet. Uh, we can change that to nine feet, let's say. And we'll find that our riser height has changed it's still within most code requirements around the world. So, but in addition, let's say that we're going to have a, uh, a railing associated with the stair. And we have several options here. One, two, three, four. One of the things it says is pick one option only. Well, that's not necessarily true, but you can get yourself in problems if you pick the same ones on the same side. So you want to be a little bit careful how you use it. Let's say we used a round tube with glass and we wanted to use that railing on the outer, inner or on both sides. Let's pick both sides and we'll say OK and there is our railing. Let's zoom in and of course if we now want to replicate that stair to the next floor Let's go one more time and we'll say we want to go down one floor, as I explained already. Floor height hasn't changed, so we'll say OK. And uh, the railing is going to be on both sides. We'll say OK to that. And let's just put that railing in there, right there. 
and let's go have a look and now we have a two-story railing the railings all line up very nicely and it's not a really an exit stair but it's a very nice uh, stair that you might want to use in the uh, in your main entry of a department store for example as you can see you can add on to various other railings for next floors and so on okay let's see what we can do with uh, the baluster and how it applies to these stairs so let me just drag in exactly what a simple stair would look like this is just a PNG file. We can start out with the basics and we can modify the stair depending on certain requirements all from this particular sub menu on what type of tube you would like to use. So let's take that back out and it's, let's just start with a simple stair and we're going to go up one floor and we're going to indicate it there let's zoom back out and uh, let's say that we want to use our particular baluster well to use the baluster we need a little bit more information so let me just uh, construct a stringer along the outside and we'll just uh, extend it uh, two inches. All right, so now I can use my baluster and I can have, let's use the solid option with a square guard rail and we'll just go from the top to the bottom and voila. So now I've got a, a baluster uh, with a, uh, a solid guard rail and uh, if I zoom a little bit further, of course, I can replicate that again. I can do the same feature again. Just click two points. And now I've got this guardrail. And I can con continue it on the second floor. Okay, moving along. Let's say we increase the stair by enclosing the... Uh, the stringer on the other side we want to have a different baluster so let's continue using the baluster tool and this time we we'll use a square tube without a, a wall and fill for the for the guard and so we'll just go click the top portion there we are and let's zoom in and we'll do the same thing here and as we turn the corner we want to obviously do something about the second floor situation so let's just zoom in here and we'll put a guard same thing and we'll continue up to there and now we have a guard that continues around the rest of the second floor should we desire that to be the case Okay, so now we've got a little problem here. As a designer, I don't really want two posts next to each other, but unfortunately Ruby isn't smart enough and it doesn't really know what you as a designer want either. Uh, I can design the Ruby to include posts at every end, but in this particular session we have one too many, so we have to do a little bit of manual editing. And to do that, well, we just have to do this strictly what we do with SketchUp most of the time, we simply have to identify these pieces, delete them, and delete uh, this one. There we go. And so now we've got something that's more manageable and we can actually take this element and uh, increase it to that edge, increase it to that edge, and so now we have something that's more conducive to the situation that you want as a designer. So ultimately, what we're arriving at here is how can we use the concrete stair tool 
in an effective way and have it become part of a concrete framing tool. And you can see that this particular aspect, which shows its implication in this particular event, is related to a new plugin that I've created, which is called Concrete Framing Tools. And, co and what Concrete Framing Tools does, it provides a network of repetitive elements, which can be very easily manipulated to incorporate such things as stair tools and other openings or elevators and in fact uh, if you, one goes to the layers menu I can uh, turn on the a framing layer called glass so that it incorporates exterior elements as well into the total design so that you can now implement a very good representation of a 3D building such as a wall, uh, Walmart or whatever that has repetitive structural elements and incorporate various elements such as stair tools or window tools or door tools that I've created in the past that you can see here. So it makes it a very nice way to to coordinate all of these implements into into a cohesive 3D building.